Hello everybody and welcome to a new video and welcome to my channel where we talk about everything music from death metal to queen and everything in between. Today we have a treat for you. We've got Paolo Angulo at the Heat Studios who's going to talk to us about all of the universal audio pedals that came out. So who is Paolo Angulo? Take it away. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, I work for Universal Audio and I'm the sales rep for Latin America and in the United States, the Southeast. And I also do beta testing uh, for the pedals, for the plugins, and Luna. So not only I sell the products uh, and represent the products, but I actually use all of those pedals. These are all my actual pedals. Yes. So, and I actually love using these pedals. I believe in, in, the, in the sound and the brand, obviously. Yeah, so I'm not getting any of these pedals, by no. the way. <laughs> anyway, by the way, um, Universal Audio is not sponsoring this video. <laughs> In fact, Elephant Food Risers is actually sponsoring this video, so I'll talk to you about them later. But check this out. That's a custom fit. Eh? Wow. Eh? More about that later. Anyway, this is the new line that came out out of um, Universal Audio, right? Yeah. This is the newest pedals that came Correct. out. Correct, yeah, we have nine now. They came out when? Uh, April this year. Okay, so not a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But these were the first ones to come out. Correct. So tell me about these guys. So the three first pedals that we launched uh, were, I think we call it like, you know, guitar player basic. So mm -hmm. we have reverb, we have delay, and we have modulation. So reverb right. is the golden, which has um, several types of reverb. So it's one pedal with multiple algorithms. So you have spring, you have plate, and you have um, the halt reverb. And there's actually se several versions uh, in, in here. So you have A, B, and C per each one of those right. categories. Yeah, I remember that. Um, and when you register the pedal, you actually get even more algorithms that are not on by default. Right, exactly. So you register the pedal, you actually get more. So what we wanted to do is create a platform that uh, had pretty much our UAD, you know, uh, plugins in the mm -hmm. same quality of professional uh, UAD studio platform into a, a, a pedal that can be uh, anywhere from, you know, guitar, bass, keyboards, anything, because they actually are... All of these pedals are mono and, uh, and or stereo, stereo yeah. so they can do that. So the golden is all reverbs, Astra is all modulation, so mm -hmm. we have chorus, phaser, flanger, flanger. Um, harmonic tremolo, okay. and then also, um, forgetting one, actually, tremolo. <laughs> <laughs> and tremolo. And tremolo. So, okay. Yeah, and then starlight. Uh, which is delay, so we have also different types of delays. Right. Obviously, we have tape echo, the uh, analog DMM, which is basically on the memory, uh, deluxe the, memory yeah. man. Precision delay, uh, again, if you register, you get actually a couple more. One is the Cooper Time Cube, which a lot of people don't know about, which is one of the original units that Bill Putnam designed, the founder of Universal Audio, mm -hmm. uh, early in the day. And the, it, it actually was a unit that had a garden hose, and at the end of the garden hose had a microphone. Wow. So that time that it took for the sound to travel and get to the microphone, that's how the delay was. That's how it worked. Wow. And there's an algorithm inside the starlight. Perfect. That that. Even back then, I mean, this was the newest, I mean, the oldest ones. Yeah. Um, even back then, they were USB um, compatible and uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, the USB is mainly for just registering your device mm -hmm. and any updates to the firmware right. of, the, of the pedal. And then the Bluetooth is so you can control internal settings, uh, like for example, the foot switches can be changed, but also uh, you can actually have presets, which is right, the exactly. best part about them. Um, you know, the presets allow you to save or use a library of factory presets. I'd like to welcome our new sponsor, Elephant Foot Risers. Elevate your sound. Elephant Foot Risers recently came on the scene with their innovative fitted and non-fitted pedal risers. Their unique fitted risers feature zero loss footprint, allowing you to fit as many pedals on your board as possible. Fitted risers work with all popular brands of pedals from Boss to MXR to Strymon and many more. Elephant foot risers also offer non-fitted block and wedge pedal risers that are super strong, lightweight, and provide incredible versatility. All fitted and non-fitted risers provide cable management pathways, multiple attachment options, and work with all kinds of pedal boards. Risers come in a wide range of standard sizes and colors, and custom sizes and colors are available on request. Ready to maximize your pedal board? Visit elephantfootrisers.com to explore the full range of products and find the perfect risers for you. Elevate your sound at elephantfootrisers.com. So next, the second family of pedals that came out was this row right, yeah. right here. So we have the Ruby, the Dream, and the Woodrow. Mm -hmm. The Ruby is obviously my personal favorite. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know that. But tell one. me, <laughs> I have one, of course. That's why I love it, because I actually do own one. And um, I mean, it's based on the AC30, which you guys know I love. But then, I mean, 
there's a lot of things I don't know about this pedal, so mm -hmm. he's going to talk about them. And then also, we have the Dream and the Woodrow. So yeah. what are these two based out of? So obviously, the Ruby is an AC30. Yeah. We can talk about that one later. But the Dream and the Woodrow, those two are Fender amps. But they're very different, you know. The Woodrow is a 57 Tweed Deluxe. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, actually, 55 Tweed Deluxe, I'm sorry. And 55, these, wow. Yeah, so those amps are very different than what a Dream, which is a 65 Deluxe Blackface. You know, the, yes. the, the Deluxe Reverb, which is the most one of the most famous recorded amps of all time. Very clean, high headroom, uh, with beautiful reverb. Completely different than the Woodrow. The Woodrow has no reverb, very low headroom. It actually distorts very quickly. And it was the sound of rock and roll. Mm -hmm. That's the sound that a lot of people use, Chuck Berry used, you know, like yes. those classic rock and roll sounds. And actually had a microphone input for like harmonica. Uh, and people used to bridge the two... <laughs> the two inputs to get even more distortion. So it's a very spongy sound. And believe it or not, this is the circuit that actually gave birth to Marshall. Wow. So the Marshall amplifier is based out of this circuit, not this. Not this. Because, because we know it's based out of a Marsh. I mean, out of a Fender amplifier, of a Fender. but it, it's based out of that. Basically a Fender basement, but the basement actually has the same preamp circuitry as this. The power amp obviously is very different. Cool. Mm -hmm. More, way more power than a 55 2 Deluxe. Yeah but the actual preamp side of it is actually the same circuit. So there is a cab in here. So you have three, every, every single one of them has three speakers, Yes. right? That come from factory that actually change the tone because it's like as if you were changing the speaker on the same, same cab that you have, just take the speaker out. Put okay. It on. And then when you register, you get three more, but those are not just speakers. Those are complete cabs. So wow. as if you were taking the amplifier and plugging it into an external cab. And actually, there's one in the wood row that's a 4x12 Marshall cap. Nice. So it, it gets really close. It gets, yeah. Very sure. Marshall-y tones, you know. So awesome. it's very, you know, very versatile in that, in, that, in that way. Now, this is your favorite, right? Or is it the Ruby as well? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm a Fender. I've seen you play a lot. Yeah. I, I'm a Fender guy usually, and I have a Deluxe Reverb. Right. But, right there. But for some reason, I don't know what it is. I've been playing the Ruby more than the Dream. Like a man. Uh, <laughs> because there is something particular, especially there's something I like about the Ruby because in my pedal board, I have the Ruby uh, and I also have uh, overdrives. Mm -hmm. And there's something specifically uh, about the Ruby that takes overdrives so well. Like the AC30 in general yeah. circuit, I think it takes overdrives and high you know, gain pedals better than the Fender. Yeah, I was actually going to say that like, the AC30 is famously known for like, yeah. taking pedals very well. Yeah. Just working it's very well really with pedals. It's a really nice pedal platform. It's, it's, AC30, the JC um, 120, 120. Mm -hmm. those, are the, those are the amps yeah. for pedals. And then in this one, there's a, a, a green setting, which is the green back. Uh, awesome. When you put that green back on and you have a really high gain pedal before it, it just m blends everything so well and it doesn't get bright. And, and That's actually brilliant. how I play it. I get a oh, okay. TS9 and then, you know, green back. And the green back. And I mean... What, what, what else? I mean, I still love the dream, but there's something about the Ruby that I just like it draws me a little more lately. Awesome. So what about these guys? Because I haven't been able to play with these guys yet because, yeah. you know, they're pretty new, but they're pretty interesting. I mean, even the look has changed mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. So tell me about these guys. So you see the knobs a little different yeah. than the other ones uh, to just differentiate these. Same switches? Same switches, same internals, you know, everything same. Yeah, they're still stereo. They're still the same algorithms, but... We wanted comp something completely different, like the Max. The Max is a very particular pedal because it has two sides. Mm -hmm. And each side, you can have um, one compressor per side, but you have three options. So you have the classic MXR Dynacomp. You have uh, uh, the uh, LA-2A from UA, mm -hmm. and then the 1176. So this would still be aimed at guitar players mostly. Yeah, but bass players can actually do... Oh, well, yeah, too, yeah, because yeah, you, oh, you also have the 610 preamp. So that's the red knob, and that's based on the Universal Audio 610. Mm -hmm. So for a bass player, uh, you know, you can actually have a little bit of preamp uh, and then compression, let's say, from an LA-2A. That's a typical bass, uh, like, chain. You have a preamp and an LA-2A for the roundness and, like... The bottom the, end. The bottom end. And you can have an 1176 before if you want to, just to control the peaks. Awesome. If you do, like, slapping or if you dig in really hard, right. the 1176 is faster, so it can actually control those peaks better, and then go into an LA-2A just to round it off and get more low end. And this one actually has some uh, internal settings when you go into the Bluetooth app okay. to actually put a sidechain compression, a sidechain filter on the compressor, I'm sorry. So when you compress the bass, for example, it doesn't compress the low end. 
it compresses the mid to highs. Oh, wow. So the low end is just, it flows through as a bypass, right? So you can use that for bass, you can use it for guitar. If you want your, your guitar to have a lot more low end when you, you know, you chugging, for example, if right. you have a seven string guitar, whatever, Exactly. You know, that that's setting, a that setting is in here. You just have to go into into the app. When you have a seven string, it, get, it tends to get saggy. So yeah. you can you can definitely yeah, tame if, it with if this. You, if you don't do it, uh, if you don't put that option, that low end is going to affect the compressor, and it's going to bring everything down. Right. And it's going to actually choke the guitar a little bit. So that's the max. Then we also have the Galaxy. Uh, even though we do have delays, we have to have reverbs. The Galaxy is based on a space echo, which is a very okay. particular unit. And obviously stereo, so as if you actually had two. Um, That's cool. But the tape echo obviously has, uh, the, 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 the space echo actually has different settings. So you have multiple heads. Usually on a delays, uh, one head, right, which will give you quarter notes, eight notes. Whatever. Right, yeah, I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. Right? On a Galaxy sp uh, space echo, actually, you have three heads. Wow. You can combine, uh, you know, individual, or you can do one and two, uh, one and three, Two and three, or one, two, and three. All three <laughs> That's crazy. Plus, on top of that, you actually have that classic reverb, which is actually a spring reverb mm -hmm. that was inside that unit. Uh, and it's very uh, classic to a lot of reggae sounds. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of classic sounds were done with the space echo only because it had those two sounds, reverb and delay. So Now, also, I've seen a lot of people use these for other stuff other than guitar, like, yeah. you know, keyboards and vocals. Yeah. And stuff like that, especially this guy for like bass. You mm -hmm. know? I've yeah. seen that a lot. But you know, with like synthesizers and stuff uh -huh. like that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you get actually, a lot of crazy sounds. like if you if you get a synth that doesn't have, you know, not a, a modern synth. If you get a, a synth that has, um, you know, mo monophonic sounds like a Moog uh, or a, a Juno, something that's classic mm -hmm. that doesn't have any reverb. Obviously, it doesn't have most most modern keyboards have a digital effect. Right. Right. Most of the older ones didn't have any of that. Actually, that was, you know, that's that's a really good use for these. You can actually go in here and a lot of those are mono, too. So you can go mono into this and, and come make out it stereo. stereo. Yeah. And what about these guy? So then the lastly, the Del Verb is uh, delay and reverb, two pedals into one enclosure. Right. So we wanted to have uh, for people that like, you know, saving space on the pedal board. That's money right there. <laughs> and you know, you want the, but you don't want to sacrifice the sound. So the del verb is taking the delay from the starlight and the verb is taking uh, the reverb from the golden. So you actually have three delays, three types of delays and three types of reverbs that you can actually um, change. And they are from those two pedals. So okay. you're actually, you know, it's the same algorithm, just obviously with less options because we have to fit it in one pedal. So it's basically like a compressed version of these two. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. But you still get, you know, the same sound as you get out yeah. of this and just less options. Yeah, and then, for example, on this one, uh, you can actually change on the on the Bluetooth app. Mm -hmm. The right foot switch can be a tap tempo for the delay. Okay, cool. And then the left one could be the master on and off for the whole effect of yeah. both reverb and delay. Yeah, turn it off Or you on. can actually, if you're one person that doesn't like to do tap tempo, you don't care about tap tempo, right. then you can actually make... Uh, on and off for just reverb and just delay. That's cool. So it's just basically like two different pedals running two together. Two different pedals in one, yeah. That's awesome. Which one is your favorite? So obviously, if I had to choose one, I can't. You cannot. Because. Well, they're, they're different, yeah, Because of they're course. different. But if I had to choose like, okay, I want to build a pedal board, the most compact pedal boards that I can build and travel, I I'll pick these two. <laughs> just these two, yeah. Yeah, I mean. That's, that's what I'm thinking too. I yeah. mean, this guy is awesome. And I mean, the Ruby, it's yeah. excellent. But this guy, you know, you get the delay, you get the reverb. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get the best of both worlds. Yeah, because I do love the spring reverb on the Galaxy. But because this one has more choices, I can go spring or plate or hall, which is right. probably your favorite. Yes. Um, I do use the hall a lot for playing guitar. I've always been, like, like you said, a, a Fender guy, yeah. which has just a spring reverb. And I always thought the spring reverb was the best for guitar until I started playing hall. And then I realized, like, for, like, super long spacious luscious sounds that doesn't get in the way of your guitar playing actually it's like a bed mm -hmm. i was like wow i i discovered like i actually like hall <laughs> i told you i've been telling you all these years <laughs> I, I think i like hall better than spring but i mean spring is cool for like everyday you know rhythm tones yeah totally if you're interested in getting any of these pedals check out the affiliate links below and if you're interested in knowing more about these pedals you got to talk to the source right here so what do we find you paulo so I have a YouTube channel that's called The Heat Studio because of the name of the studio where we're in. Of course. 
Uh, so you find me on YouTube as The Heat Studio. And on Instagram, you can find me as Paolo Angulo, Paolo.angulo underscore THS, which is just uh, The Heat Studio abbreviated. So, and I'm more than welcome to answer any questions. And obviously, subscribe to Pat's channel. And if you can, subscribe to my channel too, where I actually I do some of reviews of this stuff. All right. Anyway, thank you very much for taking the time to explain all this. And go check out the pedals. They're awesome. I'll see you guys next time. Pat out. Metal on, dudes.